Peace everyone, on Mask Art here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to color this landscape. The supplies that I'm going to be using for this tutorial is luminance colored pencils. However, you can use Prisma colored pencils as long as you match the color palette on the left side of the screen. The other thing that I'm using is odorless paint thinner. I will be using this with a number 8 round brush to blend things out. The last thing that I'll be using today is brush and pencils textured fixative spray. This is definitely a requirement if you intend to do landscapes and colored pencils, so I have the link in the description for both the UK and US store. With that said, let's go ahead and get started. Alright everyone, so let's go ahead and get started on this. The color that I'm using right now is the 161, and basically what I'm doing is I'm going from left to right and using small circular motions with my pencil just to build the base layer of the sky. The next thing that I do after getting about a third down the page is I switch to my 661 pencil and then I start overlapping it and moving a little bit further down the page. The purpose of the overlapping is to get a nice transition blend between the two colors. And then the third color that I use is the 002 color, and I do the same method by overlapping. I do take my sky a little bit farther down the page than what I intend to have as the sky, because it's a lot easier to put the foreground subjects over top of it so I have really nice coverage and I don't have to work around anything. The next thing that I do is I switch back, I reverse the color order, I switch back to the 661 and then the 161, and I do the same layering process from bottom to top, just moving back and forth, left to right, and right to left. The reason you want to keep your pencil strokes motion generally horizontal is because it's a lot easier to hide the horizontal lines in the sky than it is vertical. If you don't do small circles, which you don't have to, Make sure that you keep your lines horizontal so that you hide those transitions. This will help the sky look a lot more even. Once you do a few layers of those colors on top of each other, you can go through with your paint thinner and start blending out. Now when you're doing this, you also want to make sure that you're working horizontally. In this case, I'm still working in small circles, which is also fine, considering this is just the base layer and I'll do one more layer over top of this. But other than that, you want to make sure that you keep your brush strokes nice and horizontal. And the other reason for doing that is so that you don't blend the darker blue farther down than what you want or what you intend. You want to have a nice soft gradient in your sky to make it look skylight. This process can take quite a bit of time, however, doing it nice and slow and taking your time is what's really going to help get you the best result. After I have everything blended out with my odorless paint thinner, I go back with my 002 and I work from the bottom, start doing another layer with that color, and then I switch back to my 661, do another overlapping layer, and work up farther, and then I switch once again to my 161 and work up to the top. Now I do add one more color to this piece. I add a little bit of vignetting at the top with the 159, just a really subtle layer. That will help draw in the eye when the final piece is done. It's nice to add that subtle vignette. The next thing that I do is I take my other two colors and I just kind of blend them a little bit, do a few overlapping just to get really nice coverage. And then once again, I go back through my paint thinner, and this time I'm using horizontal brush strokes with my paint thinner to just make sure everything's really nice. When I get up to the top, I really want to be careful about lifting off the color. So when I'm blending, after I dip my brush in the odorless paint thinner, I'm drying it off with a paper towel almost completely. And then I'm almost using just the fumes of the brush to finish blending in the colors. And this is what's going to help get rid of those small pits that you see in the colored pencil wax when it's laying on the paper. Doing this over your sky takes even more time, but if you spend the time doing it, this is what's going to make your sky look like it's painted on there, and it's really worth adding the extra time. The next thing that I do is I switch to my 508 pencil, and basically what I'm doing is I'm doing a short, jagged line from left to right and then back right to left to create the tops of trees. 
I'm, I'm pressing quite hard because I want the contrast between the sky and the skyline to be really, really clear. I want the edges to be nice and sharp. The next thing I do is I use my 159 and my 093 to kind of create the foggy scene below this tree line. Once I blend it out, it will be a bit more obvious looking. I switch back and I add some shadows with my 159, and then I add some highlights on some of the closer trees with the 030. After I put a nice layer of those colors down, I just blend it out with my Odalisk paint thinner. And one of the things you want to keep in mind is you want these colors to be somewhat desaturated, so I'm kind of just layering them over top of each other with a bit of the 093 on top of all of it. It's a really nice cool gray color and it helps desaturate the colors a bit because when you're working in a landscape, you want to make sure that the objects that are farthest away are not only in the mid-range value of the piece in general, but you also want the color to be a, a bit less saturated than the foreground objects. In general, when you're working with landscapes, as the object gets farther away, it loses detail, saturation, and value. So as you're coming forward, all those things increase. This is what helps create the depth of the landscape. So after I've blended that out, I start working on a few of the closer trees. And as you can see, I'm just doing a base layer. I'm using mostly the 093, the 030. I use a little bit of the 065 and then some of the 159. Most of my tree branches and shadows on the tree I do with the 159. And then once I just have kind of a clump of colors, I just blend everything out nicely. Blending all those colors together helps balance out some of the saturation so it's not too bright. And then once I do that and my odorless paint thinner has dried, this is where I incorporate some of the Russian pencil textured fixative. I spray a little bit right there on the trees because some of the trees are popping over the horizon and I want to be able to lay those colors down with really great contrast against the sky and without this textured fixative you just wouldn't be able to do that because of how burnished the sky already is. And this technique will become much more important later on in this piece. So after I've sprayed it a couple times and I let it dry, I switch to my 508 color and this is where I build some of the texture and darker shadows in the trees in the background there. As you can see, I'm drawing over top of the sky and I'm getting really nice contrast with that 508 color. And that 508 color isn't black, it's kind of a dark, cool gray. I use that color mostly for creating the detailed texture of the bushes, adding the tree branches in general for this part of the landscape. Adding this value to this portion of the trees and branches helps bring it forward away from the background mountain hill area. The next thing I do is I use the 093 and the 004 to create kind of a mist on the bottom before switching to my brush and using the paint thinner to blend everything out. And then once I blend out that mist, it kind of gives it a nice glow. The next thing that I do is I start on the grass and the color that I'm using for this is the 015, which is kind of like a greenish yellow. And basically what I'm doing is short vertical strokes from left to right, similar to how I did the sky but kind of the opposite. The real key here is making sure all of your pencil strokes are nice and short and all vertical. I mean, they can be a little bit diagonal, they don't have to be perfectly vertical, but creating this texture early on really helps reinforce the texture of the grass overall, and this will make drawing the grass 10 times easier. It takes a little bit of extra effort to keep all these pencil strokes the same and working back and forth, but it's definitely worth it when it comes to creating grass. The next thing I do is I use my 225 pencil 
And this is where I'm just gonna start building in some of the shadows and different values that you get in the grass. And then I switch to the 039. And this is where I start to draw in some of the shadows that are being overcast from the trees that are off the page to the right. This is gonna show up much, much better after I blend it with the odorless paint thinners. But for right now, I'm just blocking in shadows and colors that will be used in this foreground. One of the things that I'm doing with these shadows I'm making sure that they're nice and long and horizontal. This is going to give the effect that they're shadows and not just a hole in the ground or something. And then I'm also maintaining the texture of the grass within the shadow by doing the same technique with the vertical strokes but with my 039 pencil instead. And then I shadow in a little bit of where the tree for the main subject of this piece is coming in. So you can see I have that tree planned out. I just haven't sprayed the textured fixative yet to be able to start drawing that tree over all the things I have already on the page. After you have kind of this plan sketched out in your colors, I'm switching through my 225, my 015, 039, and a little bit of my 037 and 159 just to add some variance in the colors of the grass, just to give it a bit more realistic look. Again, it's gonna look a lot different after I start blending it out. Now you can see that I've started using my odorless paint thinner. This is where I'm starting to blend out the grass. And you can see that the, the colors are really starting to come out now in the grass before it didn't make much sense. And similar to how I'm using my pencil to create the texture of the grass, I'm doing the same exact thing with my brush by making sure that all my brush strokes are nice and vertical. Now you can see how those blues and darker greens in the shadows are starting to come out a bit. And then also where I added some of it in the grass in the background, you can see how that layering of the vertical lines really helps create that grassy, soft texture. It's kind of like giving the earth fur. If you're familiar with drawing animal fur, it's kind of like a short animal fur. After I have that blended out, I go back through with those same colors, the 015, the 039. I use a little bit of the 548 in the shadows. It's kind of a dark brown color. And then some of the 225 as well. And this is just adding those little details that help bring out the texture of the grass. Nothing real special. You also don't want to try blending too much because you want that grainy texture. It really helps it make look like grass. I go through with some of my darker colors, like a bit of the 508 and the 549 in the shadows. I also add a little bit more of the 159 because in this kind of setting, the shadows are really nice blue color given the season that this scene is to take place. All the time while I'm adding these shadows and details, I'm being very mindful that my pencil strokes are still vertical. As you can see in the background, the grass starts to lose its texture. That's the same concept that I was mentioning how as you come closer to the foreground, your objects become more valued. They have more value, they have more texture, they have more detail, and they have more saturation. So in the farthest parts of the back, I actually use a little bit of a white pencil just to kind of smooth out some of the texture of the grass. And then I use the odorless paint thinner to blend that smooth so you lose a little bit of the texture. This really helps create a depth of field that brings the eye forward and this is really important when you're trying to highlight the foreground object. Now that I have the grass and the background complete, I'm ready to start working on the main subject of this piece. And before I do that, I, I again spray this piece with quite a few coats of the textured fixative, especially in the sky area where I know the tree is going to be. I also do it a little bit on the base so I can create some foreground details. The spray does tend to warp your paper. You're going to want to make sure that you have all of your edges taped down really nicely on a smooth, flat, hard surface when you're spraying this. And you don't have to worry about smell or toxicity with this spray. It's non-toxic. I've sprayed it in my teeny tiny room with the windows closed. It's basically hairspray. After I've sprayed it and I let it sit for a bit, I start drawing in my tree. 
Basically what I do here is I just use my 508 color and I just start branching out and kind of draw this tree without any leaves. And this is the best way that I could think of drawing a tree. I've never drawn a tree in this much detail before. So basically this is how I thought of doing it, just kind of creating the skeleton. And then I'm using still the 508 color and then I create some of the shadows. The next thing that I do is I switch to my 037 pencil and this is where I start to just kind of dab in some little leaves. I'm, I'm really just kind of scratching the paper a bit and laying down some general shapes, mostly the outline of the tree, just kind of getting an idea of where this tree is going to be. But I focus most of it on how the edges of the tree kind of have the sky bleeding through so I don't want to just go scribbling all over the place I want to make sure that I leave those those really important holes where the sky is coming through and you can see through the tree it is extremely important when it comes to making the tree look three-dimensional and adding volume to it next thing I do is I switch to my 159 color and I start adding in some of the shadowed parts of the leaves this process took Quite a bit of time because I really wanted this tree to have a tremendous amount of detail because it was the focal point of this landscape so I needed to make sure that all of my attention to detail went into this tree I'm still using the 159 pencil now I switch over back to the 508 pencil at this point the colors are pretty much off limits i'm using the 159 for the shadows of the trees i'm using the 508 for the really dark parts and even in the darkest of dark parts is where i start to incorporate the black 009 after i kind of layer those colors on top of each other and try to establish the light source which is off to the right i use my paint thinner i just kind of blend it out a little bit and i do i do little dabs with my paint thinner because i don't want it blending all over the place i want the texture and i want the kind of leafy look that the tree has once i blend those out i switch back to my pencils and i start just doing the little dabs and doing the small leaf texture and this is kind of a growing process this the way that i'm going about it is i'm kind of finding those shadowed parts that are really dark and then the really light parts and i'm just avoiding those for now so once i do that i blend it out a little bit more and then I spray it once again with the textured fixative. While I'm waiting for the tree to dry a bit more, I start working on some of the foreground grass, and this is where I start just adding a bit of the longer stuff just to help tie in everything and give it a nice border at the bottom. This is also where I incorporate a little bit more of the black just to give it that vignetting that I was talking about in the beginning. Now you can see how everything kind of pulls in towards the tree. Now that the textured fixative is dry on the tree, you can see that the 030 pencil is showing up much, much brighter. And this is exactly what I wanted. That's what's so amazing about this textured fixative. I just can't get over how amazing it works on making it like you were just drawing on paper again over top of layers and layers of colored pencil. So the last part of this tutorial that I do to really incorporate tons and tons of texture and detail into the tree is probably one of my all-time favorite techniques that many of you have probably seen on plenty of my tutorials and it's using pencil scrapings to create all kinds of texture. You've seen me use it on trees before, you've seen me use it on kind of rocks, you've seen me use it in eyes. This is just one of my favorite techniques. So I'm using my favorite colors here. I'm using the 030, the 065. I even use some of the 015 and I'm just scraping tons and tons of the pencil off just all over the place. I'm not really caring at this point because you can use a brush to put them where you want them and just build it up as much as you want. And then I get my spoon and this is where I choose the spot where I want the pencil wax to come in. The last thing that I do is I use a little bit of my black and a little bit of my 159. Really at this point, all the colors are free to use. I just throw it into the tree as much as I can, building up just tons and tons of texture until finally I get the look that I want. 
Anyway, here's a look at the final product of this landscape. I hope that you found this tutorial informative and helpful and fun to watch. Anyways, make sure that you subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, and maybe share this video if you liked it that much. Also, if you'd like to help support my channel, you can head over to my Patreon page where I offer all of my reference photos, including the one for this one. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.